Okay, so a quick ad break there. Diana, we were just getting to the really interesting part there. You were going to tell me about the seven continents and you're the first person to run a marathon. Is it an ultra marathon? Um, marathon? It's a 250, at least 250 kilometer. Self-sufficient race. Self-sufficient and multi-day as well. Okay. Yeah. Just give an account of one of those days. Okay, so first of all, I'll just tell you which ones were like. Yeah. Um, the Marathon de Saab is known as the toughest foot race in the world. So um, that's through the Sahara Desert. So basically what you do is um, it's a staged race and you run a certain distance every single day. So say the first day you'd start off and you could run 30 kilometres, second day could be 40, third day could be 90, next day could be 100. You know, it varies from day to day. And then you have to carry everything. So you carry, like, it's... Okay, my bag actually on weigh-in on this first race was just over 10 kilos. Now, that's excluding water. So you obviously carry that, and then with your water, you're adding at least 2 kilos onto your bag weight. Mm. And then um, there's checkpoints every 10 kilometres so you can drink water, etc. Now, as you know, the Sahara Desert is um, pretty, it's pretty harsh condition. Yeah, what degree is Celsius now? 40, 30-something? Um, no, the hottest day was 56 degrees. Microwave stuff. And you're running non-stop. You don't stop. And then the problem is, and then at night, actually, because there's no cloud cover, it can go to sub-zero. So because um, you're limited, obviously, in what you bring, um, you just have a very light kind of merino wool top in the evening. Mm -hmm. And then during the day, merino wool, you never change. You never have a shower, nothing, for like eight days. Wow. Yeah. So that was the marathon to have. That was the first one in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then that year also at the end of the year I did one called the Transalpine now out of these seven continents some are self fully self-sufficient and then some are partially self-sufficient mm -hmm. so the um, Transalpine was 300 kilometres over 8 days all staged again and a climb of 16,800 metres mm. so, so Diana when you're doing these um, do you run with a, with a partner that run, that's, runs or do you just go out on your own pace or what, what um, way do you Actually, I was lucky enough to, I have a friend who lives in South Africa, so we ran like the whole thing, each of these seven continents together, which is a great help. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, especially for the first one, when you're comparing notes and you're trying to get the lightest kind of gear and you're trying to get the lightweight food that has loads of calories. And, you know, it's great fun actually trying to prepare, especially when you're is unknown to you, etc. So, no, he was a great help now, I must say. <laughs> Um, so then in 2009, the Gobi March, which was in western China, just near Mongolia, um, that was another se purely self-sufficient 250-kilometre um, race. And then, God, I'm losing track. There was... Oh, yeah, I ran from... So just to give people an idea, you were actually running for how many... For uh, uh, days on the end. Yeah. Just explain um, it to Diana. That's unbelievable. The longest race I did was 42 hours all, like, all together. Non-stop. On your feet. Yeah, that's called the Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc. Yeah. So that was tough. And actually, it was really annoying because um, I did that. I attempted to do it in 2009, and I literally was found unconscious in a ditch. So then I had to do it last year, and I'm doing it this year as well. I finished last year. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, that's the longest, 42 hours. Mm. Yeah. So going to all these extreme places, like you've been, um, the, the, the dog, the sleigh dog one Oh, as well. yeah, 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 dog sleigh, um, yeah. Have you ever been, like, uh, as runners, are you well looked after? Have you ever been in any dangerous, what's the support Actually, like? Actually, I'll dangerous give you... Like, situations? Yes, in Australia. Yeah. Okay, so um, it was in, it's all with this um, organisation called Racing the Planet. So I was in Australia and it was a long stage. But just before that, I'd gone to Atacama in Chile and I'd done another purely self-sufficient race. So there was only six weeks between them and you have to recover because your feet get so many blisters from the sand and Is then that water, the typical injury, blisters on the feet? Hugely, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like really infected practically ulcer kind of blisters yeah absolutely I mean the funny thing is so with this Australian race and same with um, Atacama during the day it is so hot that even though the Sahara was 56 degrees it's kind of a dry heat so it's not as bad but in these places it's so humid that during the day you actually think about survival and I'm not joking you don't think about your starving you don't think about your feet nothing and then it's at night when you come in and like there's eight people per tent it's then where you start kind of getting a bit well you're obviously very um, malnourished well you're hungry obviously because you're not 
um, carrying that much and then your feet are bad etc but during the day it's just a matter of survival you don't think of those things mm -hmm. so to come back to your question about um, danger in one of the races in Australia it was in a place called the Kimberleys and first of all before we started we were told like there was going to be all these um, poisonous snakes etc etc which you, know, you would get I suppose in Australia which is fair <laughs> enough and I uh, you know it kind of added to the excitement you could say. the hopping spot the jumping spires no. oh yeah 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 exactly oh Ooh. yeah and like gone. actually in this race um usually you can sleep in a tent but this one again was completely self-sufficient and in one area one night um it was impossible for any kind of crew to get in so therefore they couldn't set up tents or anything so we were actually sleeping on rocks and there was like ticks and huge ants and spiders everywhere and you're literally on rocks you know but anyway um it was during the long stage of this race and it actually took a very long time it took normally the long stage would take us less than 12 hours mm. this actually took 23 hours because our feet were really bad and it was so hot and i lost mm. my glasses on the second day in the stream etc etc so you can imagine on top of the sunshine and not having glasses sand blindness as well, yeah. precisely yeah so um next thing anyway we got to a checkpoint during at night and we were told that we nobody was allowed to do it um, on their own and that you had to go in threes because there was fresh crocodile tracks found. <laughs> that was close Sorry, enough, I thought. Okay, so it's a little bit mental as well. As yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> mental energy as well as mm. physical. So the seven, you did the seven continents, right? And yeah. you, are you the first female or the first person to do it? Well, I suppose yeah. you could say two of us were the first people, yeah. you know, because we did it together. Yeah, my friends in South Africa. Yeah. So, Diana, what is it that that spurs you on to do these, these, these most challenges? Is um, it the, is it the the adrenaline, or do you just want to get it done, or, or what? Just tell me. It's the I love it. It's very like physically demanding. It's mentally demanding. It's an absolute challenge. Um, I suppose I just love the challenge. To be honest with you. Yeah. So just to get back to yourself, Diana, you've always been interested in sport and running when you were young. You did, the, you had the ponies. Oh yes. You were in, in the ponies. Yeah. You started off. I still have that. a hunter. <laughs> Do you have a hunter? Yeah. yeah. My sister's into show jumping and. Um, She's she loves her her show jumping horses and I, I did actually did went on a hunt once. Oh, did you? Mm. Where in this area? Yeah, down around Clover Hill. Oh, very at Christmas, good. you know, they go out and they jump at the hands. Yes. Yeah, on St Stephen's Day, yeah. it's very it's yeah. a big kind of family. Yeah, I hunt with the Blazers in Galway, yeah. so that's all like stone walls and um, a lot of sort of. Not Do you go out with the dogs as well, the beagles? No. No, I had no, I just just, just the mm. hounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I still have my hunter, and then I suppose growing up I was very much into tennis and You were just squash So, Diana, um, in your spare time, do you do any other extreme sports? Like, do you do bungee jumping or ab sailing? Or oh, like yeah. Just, just in your part, you know, in your spare free time? Okay, so I, I love scuba diving. I yeah, guess yeah, scuba diving. Yeah, yeah, I do that Yeah, yeah, I do that quite often. Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah, the I advanced have open, open. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And no, seriously, did you ever do a bungee jumper? You know, just a once off, really. Oh yeah, I did thing. Storms River, which is in um, the Garden Route in the site in site near. Where is it near? It's anyway in South Africa, down at the end. That's one of the highest bungee. It is actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then um, in Australia years ago, kind of did a skydive. I, I was just you going do all to ask that. when you're going to do the skydive. <laughs> I know. I'd yeah. love to do that. But oh, it's I, great. I'd be just you know just jump out of an airplane. I I do that every night in my dreams. Anyway, I oh, jump out should. of airplanes in my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And I never die. <laughs> and I don't know how to do it, but anyway, no seriously. So you did do some skydiving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah well done. Oh no, it's and great in your fun. spare time you do play golf. Yes. Yeah. In Cav or yeah, Cavan Golf Club here. Out. Mm. Yeah. Do you so. win at that as well? Not this smart now. You do. Do you win? You know what? When I played a lot in Athenry, I did, but not so much anymore. But now you have time, have you? <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, so well done. So well done, Diana. And uh, I hope you're taking your rest period now after Boston. Yeah. So uh, what's next? What? Dare I ask? Okay, so two weeks ago, oh sorry, when was it? Sorry, it was the end of March. I was meant to go and do the Siberian black ice race. Have you heard of Mark Pollock? Yeah. He's a blind gentleman who was in Trinity, etc., etc. He's got Commonwealth Games for um, rowing, and he's actually done Ironman blind, and he's done the Gobi March, one of the ones that I did, self-sufficient, etc. He's assisted when he's running and doing it. Yeah, he is. He's got a guide. But anyway, he had actually signed up for this race as well. 
But um, so what it was, it was in Lake Baikal, and actually Claire O'Leary has just come back from there. Um, we were meant to. She's a doctor. Is that that's right. Doctor? Yeah, she does all extreme stuff. Mm-hmm. We were meant to go at the end of March, and it was cancelled. So that was that. And now, um, my next big kind of one is the Ultra Trail to Mount Blanc again. So that's Mm -hmm. like you start on a Friday evening in Chamonix and then you go through three countries all through the Alps and then you finish on a Sunday evening and you have a time limit of 46 hours and it's 9,600 metres and 170 kilometres. So, you know, it's a kind of a, as opposed to the multi-days, it's a one, it's a one stage race. Okay, Diana, what can I say? Diana, you're a champion and you're a a star as well and you look very well and relaxed after all of that. (laughs) Okay, Diana, we wish you the best of luck with Thank your you next much. challenge. And thanks very much for taking the time out of your punching schedule for coming <laughs> in this evening. Okay, Diana, thank you very thank much. You thank very you very much. Okay, so that's Diana Hogan Murphy, and I told you she would talk about her challenges, and she really did. And she has plenty more as well that we just haven't got time for. Well, my next guest uh, in studio is uh, Jim O'Rourke, and Jim is. Jim is the, the PRO for the for Cavan IFA and we're going to talk about the, the hardships that Cavan farmers are coming are having at the moment.